Hey, folks, my guest today is Kevin Cornish with Moth and Flame. It's an award winning, he's an award winning developer of virtual reality immersive communication technology. They are, they're led by experts from immersive tech and entertainment. The company combines artistic prowess with engineering excellence and specialize in natural language processing software products that they're dedicated to pioneering for for the next decade of virtual reality learning and communication technology for both the private and the public sector. All right, Kevin, you ready to take us to the top? Let's do it. So that was a long way of basically saying you guys are building great VR experiences, training experiences for B2B clients, right? Folks like uh, Accenture. Yeah. So our product, it's an immersive learning platform. So what that means is we got an off-the-shelf content library, we got authoring tools, and then an analytics dashboard. So our customers are everyone from CHROs, chief compliance officers, chief diversity officers, basically think anybody who's an enterprise leader who their mission is to drive behavior change across any level of the workforce. Very interesting. And how do you price this thing? Yeah, so it's pricing is based on TAM. So we got kind of two categories. Uh, one is um, on a per experience base basis. So these are for things where the, the TAM is smaller, smaller user base. So that's at a 4,500, 6,500 or 8,500 a month, depending on um, kind of the different, different features that the customer needs. And then, um, for the off-the-shelf content, so this is stuff that's 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 much bigger on on the TAM. So this is tens of thousands, you know, potentially millions of users in the potential market, and then that's just uh, a per seat, um, so one hundred eighty dollars per year per user, um, based on how many how many people an organization wants to put through it. So if I'm an organization with 5,000 people and I'm doing one Christmas VR experience one time, I'm still paying 100 bucks for all 1,000 employees, even though we use it one time during Christmas? Yeah, because what we want, we, we think about behavior change and behavior change happens at, over time. And this really goes to kind of what's happening in the world of enterprise learning today, which is there's been an LMS business for the last decade which is incredibly effective at delivering the right content to the right people at the right times. But the content that's being delivered is e-learning, which is miserably ineffective. So we're talking about something that has a 20% effectiveness rate. So what what our customers are doing when they're buying the product, they want to buy the behavior change. And in this time of transformation from everything, great resignation, figuring out what's the hybrid workplace going to look like, navigating big workforces through that change is really important. And it's not something that happens as a, as a one-off event. So, so Kevin, are, it's really helpful for my audience. If we can use, yeah. yeah. Can we, can we try and use real examples here? Right. So what's Accenture going to use you for? Yeah. So Accenture uses the, they're building a library um, around child welfare uh, for child welfare workers. So that's a, that's a reseller, uh, relationship. Okay. And, um, so their different States, uh, use, use experiences where, um, child welfare workers go into a house, practice all kinds of different conversations. And then that library has been building and building, um, so that now a worker, um, can, can go and have a number of experiences, and see a number of different things. Uh, Understood. So they're not. This isn't. This isn't like they're paying you to create a little virtual Christmas world for a holiday party. This is like they're building it into like their DNA. It's a part of the training they're going to put every new person through. Yeah. So the use okay. case there. Uh, just one. One of them was um, on one of the states. They were having a real problem with churn. So fifty percent of um, child welfare workers quit within the first twelve months. So they actually started using this experience in the hiring process um, so that somebody who wanted to be a child welfare worker, they would go into this and they would see what it's really like inside of a house. And then they could make a decision before all of the expenses of training that person. Yep. If it's something that you really want to do. Makes sense. In the first year of doing that, they cut the churn by 30%. Yeah, it makes complete sense. Um, very cool. So tell me a little bit about like, what's the, I know you have two models, but what's the average customer paying you per month or per year to use this technology? Yeah, so on the um, we've got a couple of different price points on the what, what's the average, the show, Kevin? Just to try and simplify, because we have eleven minutes left. Like, what would you say like yep. the sweet spot is? Uh, the seventy-eight thousand. Okay, that's sixty-five hundred a month times twelve. 
Okay, interesting. And and someone paying you that they're they're doing something for like workforce development training. The U.S. Air Force is using you for training, like something like that. Yeah. Okay, interesting. And and how do you price this? So do you actually have an in-house uh, design shop where you're actually custom building like almost a mini meta, little metaverse? Yeah. So there's a couple of different ways. Uh, we have an, we have a, a studio, and so there it's charging basically non-recurring engineering uh, that then has the cloud license for kind of access to all the tools and everything moving forward. Um, or some customers have local vendors that they want to use. And so those vendors can use our tools. And what's your total team size today? 39. How many are focused on like the recurring product versus the one-off design? Yeah, so we're 19 are on the, the product and engineering side. And what we, you know, as we, as we think about this, um, Last year, we did uh, two and a half in revenue and um, like 200 of that was recurring. Uh, this year, we did five in revenue, 2 million was recurring. And next year, we see that number getting up probably towards 70% of it being recurring. Mm-hmm. That's impressive. So how do you respond? At, well, first of all, have you guys raised capital or do you bootstrap? Yes, yeah, so we bootstrapped until this year. We did a seed round this year. Big, big reason for that was uh, to build out our no-code builder tool. Um, and then right now we are we have a bridge that's open mostly for insiders uh, that's going to roll into a Series A that we'll do in the spring. I see. Tell, what was the size of the seed? Uh, Two point seven. Two point seven. Okay, and and I guess wh- why couldn't you fund off? I mean, you already had significant revenue. Why couldn't you fund off like upfront customer contracts? Just the acceleration of how fast we saw the technology coming. And for the first time, um, we actually saw a scalable business model. So we had a program around suicide prevention in the Air Force. So this is one where um, we created the content and then sold user licenses. So basically, like, like you're selling tickets to a movie. Um, so 10,000 for the first year, and then they expanded that for the second year up to 25. And we saw the ability to create something that was like a masterclass for VR. Um, and that there would, there's from, from the enterprise leaders perspective, they love virtual reality because, uh, it just works better and their people love it. The challenge with virtual reality is there's not a lot of content out there. So off the shelf content means they only need to pay for their usage, which means they don't need to have huge upfront startup costs. Understood. So Tell me more, that. you know, dilution is what you're trying to manage when you bring in this kind of capital, right? So what, what valuation did you raise at and how did you have that negotiation? Um, we haven't, we haven't released that, that publicly, but basic, basically like standard kind of thinking of, Standard is usually we 10 wanna, to 20% on a seed round. Were you sort of in that range? Yeah, that was kind of that's kind of the goal and the same kind of goal of what we're what we want to do on this these next rounds. Yeah. So you're talking like a 20 to 20, it's like a 20 to 30 million dollar valuation effectively on the seed round. Yeah, it's a, it's some it's some it's something in the range. Yeah. Explain to me how you're using the rolling thing. A lot of you know, I've seen a lot of founders do this, uh, but I very few talk about the strategic reasons why. Why are you why have you already opened it and you're gonna roll it into the A? Yeah, so the big reason is um, we just launched the -the off-the-shelf marketplace uh, in September. So our kind of growth on that was like we got our first customer in September, another customer in October, a couple more in November, a few more in December, and we're kind of adding kind of a few more. We think we're going to be at about five customers a month by um, February, March. How many are at today? um, So on that one, we're five. And we're oh, sorry, what about total of, customers today? Uh, we're in the 15 to 20 range. Okay, 15, got it, cool. And then, um, but we want to be on the market for the marketplace, want to be at a place where we have 15 to 20 customers that are buying off the shelf content. And then we're bringing on new content partners. And so we really want to be able to show those network effects that happen from somebody comes in and buys something because of one content partner. And then they see what else we have in the library, buy something from that other one and be able to tell, tell that, that cross-selling story. So as we've been talking to Series A investors, just kind of getting a sense of 
what it is that they're looking for in terms of um, kind of marketplace maturity, that handful of customers, handful of, of, of kind of content partners on the supply side, and some evidence of some cross selling that happens as customers as customers. Kevin, come on. I love that you do the design services. About two, you said I think three million of the five million this year was the one off stuff. But you know, you just told me twenty to thirty million valuation on five revenue. It's only like a five or six x, which tells me like that these VCs are not respecting the power of your one time revenue, which I think is powerful because it drives net dollar retention over time. Why couldn't you get them to price that into the valuation? Um. The they just it, it if it looks like services revenue that just kind of is like taken off the off the table is is basically the the sense of it. I mean, would but you just roll over and not, give up on that on that piece, or are you trying to debate <laughs> that a bit? Um, yeah, definitely, definitely trying to trying to trying to push back on it more. The biggest biggest thing that like when we talk about narrative and talk about that that particular part of it, um, talking about where that's going to be in a year and really how we're, how we're trending towards it being so much more uh, recurring in the future. Mm -hmm. The other thing is our, our gross margin on it, uh, on our subscription revenue. Um, we're up in the like 75 towards 80%. Standard. What about on the services side? Uh, close to 50 yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, not, not horrendous. Interesting. Okay, cool. So looking at raising, what do you think you'll target in the series A? How much? Uh, we're talking about 10 to 12. Okay. And what would you invest that money on in? So we got some interesting stuff on, um, on the engineering side around synthetic media and in the natural language processing. So like when we think about like long-term, what the tool can do, if you think about uh, if JJ Abrams wanted to make Westworld, what tool would he need to, you know, take the robotics aside, but just kind of for all of those conversations and how do you create all that content at scale? So there's the uh, dialogue pass, that's the natural language processing part of it. And then there's what do you see on the faces, which is the synthetic media part. So we're, I would say that we are at like um, solid working prototype on those things. And then these next rounds of funding will really be to productize that because we really want to be in a place where um, thinking about if we are Squarespace for VR in 2007, like what does that next decade look like? And at what point can that stuff really go to sell? When did you launch? Did you launch in 2007? Uh, no, no, no. Thinking about where space, Squarespace was in 2007. When did you launch the business? So we launched it in 2015. Okay. And then um, started in entertainment doing a lot of just like innovation projects in virtual reality. And then in 2019, Accenture approached us about doing something in workplace training. And then that was really when we started building out the platform uh, and focusing on it being a product company and not just a one-off innovation shop. And now the SaaS is doing 2 million bucks a year. Yeah, we were at 280 last month. That's a great 280 grand just in SaaS last month. That's incredible. All right, Kevin, let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, favorite book? Uh, Greg Gatsby. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Yeah, Andy Grove, uh, his, uh, that idea that the value of a manager is based on the productivity of the reports, something I'm really working on. How do, I, how do I do a better job of building leaders and not just solving problems? Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building a moth and flame? Uh, Slack, the, uh, that just like constant free flow of information is something we try to get, get at. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Um, pretty good, like seven to eight. Okay. And situation, married, single kids? Uh, getting married this summer. Congrats. That's exciting. Thanks, All man. right. So not married yet. And how old are you? Uh, 42. 42. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Wow. Um, I think when I was when I was younger, I was much more concerned with people pleasing, uh, and and worried about what people thought of me. And as I got more confident in myself, felt a lot more liberated in life. So feeling comfortable that that telling myself that that time would come and it, everything would be okay. 
Guys, Moth and Flame VR.com launched in 2015 as an agency. Accenture said, hey, build us a tool we can use over and over again for training purposes. They did. Now their SaaS business this year will do the total business 5 million. SaaS billion uh, business did 280,000 a month just last month. You can calculate the run rate. They're scaling nicely. 2.7 million raised, sold 10 to 20% of the business in the seed round. Now looking at doing a 10 to $12 million Series A to continue developing these synthetic materials and more of the virtual worlds, aiming to be the sort of the much more updated version of what Squarespace was for websites back in 2007. But they're doing that for the VR world. World, hopefully in 2022 and beyond. Kevin, thanks for taking us to the top. Awesome, man. Thanks so much for the time. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.